Welcome. All right, David. <laughs> All right, David Moore, Dallas Morning News. Uh, I know you focus on yourself, but in December, the teams you play, it, it varies, it can vary dramatically from week to week what they have to play for and the desperation angle and all that. Do you, do you ever address that with your team? I mean, it's really part of the game, uh, but the, the reality of it is as coaches, we just, you know, focus on our role. I mean, you know, last night and even this morning, you know, a number of assistants are, you know, starting to peek at Miami because you have, you have to do that at the end of the week. So, yeah, I mean, you know, we, um, we just stay – Focused on you know what's what's in front of us. Um, yeah, I, I think everybody clearly understands you know what, what December brings as far as the urgency. We understand we understand what Buffalo's record is, uh, but most importantly, you know we're playing up there. You know there's potential rain in the in the uh, forecast, and so you know we'll do the wet ball drills and those types of things. So you know I, I think it's your your energy and your focus is better served on on what's in front of you. Clarence still four star telegram. I know you said you don't talk about playoff scenarios, but uh, Basically, the scenario now is if you win, you're in, and you, you clinch the playoff berth. I know you said you focus on eleven. Focus on eleven wins, right? Okay. I, hey, save it for next week. Yeah. No, no, yeah, no, no, no. yeah you take week the week off. You got a good question for next week. So. But, you but, you, but you don't even talk. You don't even bring. Yeah, I mean, up. yeah. I mean, that's the goal. Uh, but you know, we, we, we understand. We want to. We want to win our division. And I mean, all the things we said at the beginning of the season, you know, nothing's changed. So. We're just trying to keep our focus tight, and you know, I'm not I'm, I'm not up here to avoid the, the topic, but I mean, it's, you know, 11 wins speaks for itself. Uh, Mike Todd Archer with ESPN. You, you guys have rolled your, your D line rotation fairly frequently every game. When you get into these kind of games at the end of the year, do you keep that rotation the same, or do you tighten it up at all? Oh no, you got to keep it the same. I mean, let's be honest. It's taking another step. Uh, you know, you're getting ready to go play in a different climate. You know, when you you play in cold weather. Obviously, you burn a little more fuel, and so you know we, we talk about all those things as how it lays up to the game. Uh, so you know we, we have a playtime plan every week. Um, you know that's something that's done in a coordinator coordinators meeting at the end of the week. Well, once we feel you know after that Saturday practice, you are clear on what the forty eight or forty nine in our case is going to be. So, but yes, we, you know we'll, we'll have a you know a plan to go in. But you know you know based on how the game goes, sometimes that could that can be adjusted. John. How close? Sorry. How, how close do? I guess it's based on the game. So, it's, but how close do you come to that plan that you guys set up at the beginning of the week? If it's a normal game, normal situations, things like that. Uh, on the play time. Talking about play time? Yeah, yeah. I mean, really, the only thing that really just play time is 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 you know is injury. So, um, you know, it's, there's situations sometimes based on what the opponent does, you know, as far as you know their personnel distribution that can adjust it too. But yeah, I mean, you're you're not usually too far off on a weekly basis. Uh, John Rashford of The Athletic. With Jake Ferguson, when did you first maybe think that, hey, he can take over this number one role that won't be too big for him? And then what's kind of the next step for him? Yeah, I, I think the biggest thing is, you know, you can see right away, you know, last year, I mean, Jake has the ability to play in all in all three phases, you know, starting in the run blocking, you know, the protection scheme and the, and the passing game. So I thought he showed that ability you know, fairly early in the process. Uh, I can't give you a date, uh, you know, but, you know, what I was not, not concerned, really focused on him more last year is, is where he was in his physical development. You know, he, you know, I think he played in the low 240s last year. So, I mean, and, you know, he did a great job in the offseason because, you know, I mean, it's his durability in to, to play in all three phases, you know, it, that's taxing for a tight end. So, you know, and I think he, he's got another level there that he can, that he can grow. Continue to grow because he's only in the second year of his, you know, of his NFL career. So, but the instincts, you know, the awareness. I mean, he understands how to play. He's really crafty yards after the catch. I mean, he, he does a really good job of, you know, um, not giving the first guy, you know, normally a, a big piece of him. So, uh, but he's he's always, you know, in, in my view, he's always had really good football instincts. And did you talk to Barry Alvarez very much before you draft no. you drafted him? No, I I did not. Um, but I mean, I think it's. You know, it's like anything. We have we have a good relationship up there, and 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 you're aware of that too. So, um, and you know, that's probably part of his his instincts and awareness. Michael Gelkin, Dallas Morning News. The left side of your offensive line, we talked about before, obviously playing at a high level for you. What do you like most about what Tyron and Tyler have got going? Well, I like most is that they're there every day together, because uh, as long as that that's in place, um, you know, I, I think it gives us a great foundation, you know, offensively to play. The way you want to play each week. Uh, I think it's important when you line up 
you know, you get in there Monday and you, you just start going through the matchups and how it'll affect or won't affect the schemes that, that you want to play in, you know, consistently in your offensive line. You know, I mean, Buffalo's, I don't think, the, I, don't, I think those guys played every game together. So, I mean, that, that, that usually, you know, look at the stats. You know, starts of an offensive line, you know, directly um, reflects winning. And so as long as those two line up together, it's a, those are good days for us. Is there a confidence you see each of them take from playing next to the other? Hell yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I'm sure you've talked to them about it. They love playing next to each other. I mean, right, rightfully so. Yes. Ed. Mike Ed Warder, ESPN. Since you hired uh, DQ to be the coordinator here, uh, you lead the NFL with 88 takeaways. Um, every coach on defense, I assume, emphasizes the importance of that to their mm -hmm. team. Why have you guys been able to get that to the field and create the result, you know, that you want in that particular dynamic? I mean, ultimately, it's, it's the players, you know, buying in and exercising that, you know, the technique. Because, you know, those kind of techniques in ball extraction, it's a fine motor skill. You can improve fine motor skill. And, um, you know, now we, we coach it and we feel, you know, we coach it better than anybody. Um, and, and, but it's more about the confidence. I mean, I think if you're ever in the defensive room or in the special teams room or if you're in the team meeting on a, on a Thursday when we, we go through the, fun, you know, the fundamentals of Cowboy 6, you can see the confidence, uh, the expertise, and the understanding. And everybody wants to be on that video. So, um, and, you know, John Fossil do, does, does the video for the Thursday meetings, and, 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 it, and it's just great reinforcement. But, but ultimately, it comes down to the players. Um, you know, they're triggering on Sundays. They're aggressive with it. And, you know, our guys are high on ball skills. That's, you know, it's by design, you know, back there. And, I mean, you, you want DBs that can catch the ball just as good as receivers. And I feel we have that. Sure. Mike Torrey of Stone Yahoo Sports. You talked yesterday about settling back into play calling, how after three or four games you felt even more comfortable. Is there a game or, or I guess, more a play example in that stretch that you either felt like, okay, this is something that I want to be sharper on or now I feel like I'm seeing this clearer than I did two weeks ago? Um, I, I won't say a play or, or a moment. I, I think it's really it's, – it's just not, you know, me feeling it. It's, it's, it's really the connection between you and the quarterback because, I mean, flow is so important to – you know, having a fast, healthy pace of operation, you know, whether you're up tempo or you're not, you're in a four minute tempo. So just really staying in that groove of the situation we're in. Um, frankly, it, it never comes out of the gate early. I think September football around the, the league uh, illustrates that. Um, you know, and we didn't, you know, we didn't, um, you know, play the, the, the starters in preseason too. So, um, but yeah, I, I could give you a, a date or a time, but I, no, I'm sure it's the first couple games. Flip side of that, is there a place since that stretch that you felt like, oh, I'm, I'm really glad I called that at that moment? Um, yeah, all the ones that work. <laughs> so, no, no, I mean, I think that's, uh, you know, the, the biggest thing, and, and I'm a big believer in this, I, I think I think a quick a quick good play is better than a late perfect play. And, and, I, and, I, and, and Dak has a really good understanding of that because the quicker I can get him to play, the ability to adjust at the line of scrimmage is always there. And, and that's what today's. NFL is about. I mean, you, you have to be able to operate at the line of scrimmage, you know, in and out of the different tempos, the different personnel groups, the stress of what the, you know, what the defense is throwing at you. So, um, you know, that's our approach and it's been working. And one last one, then you're done with me. Um, you have emphasized so much this season Dak's footwork and the precision there, but he's also been making a lot of plays outside of the pocket and on the run. How much does the structure in the pocket allow him to make those plays outside of the pocket or are they different? How much structure, how much the structure in the pocket? Are you talking about with his feet? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, everything starts with the quarterback's feet. And everything that we do from an offense is really schematically designed to make the quarterback successful. That's why it's important to run the football uh, because it opens up, you know, the, the percentage of your of your pass game, the action pass game. Uh, so yes, yeah, definitely, because there's time clocks. You know, there's you know, in everybody plays to a different time clock because you know, based on their quarterback or their you know their philosophy of how they train it and. You know, and everybody triggers into the scramble drill certain times too. That's just, you know, we all coach similar plays. I think it's just, you know, how we coach the details of it and, you know, and how the players can apply it is the, is the difference. Calvin. Calvin Watkins, Dallas Morning News. Has Mozzie's development gone as slow, too slow for you or at the right pace because he is yeah, changing? No, I think Mozzie's doing a hell of a job. I mean, you got to remember, just remember the room he walked into. You know, we, we understand. You know, he's a first round pick and all that, but, you know, and he's, he's come in here to do a, a job that's dirty. I mean, it's, it, this is not a statistic filled, you know, um, role that he has that's, that's going to, 
you know, bring a bunch of notoriety. And, you know, I think with that, I mean, that's, you know, I, I think the first time he sat down, I know in, in my office we talked about life in the A-gap, you know, because that's, that's where, that's, you know, that, that's, that's why he was drafted here. Now he has the ability to do more and will be given a chance to do more. But, you know, he, he plays on a veteran, a, you know, a veteran defensive line. So um, I, I, I like the way Moss has gone. Like how Hank is, because you have a veteran guy yeah. that have kind of helped him. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't think people realize how much goes on inside, you know, and, and, and why you see, I mean, you look at some of these young defensive tackles that really excel, you know, past year four, five, and six and going to play 10, 12 years because, you know, there's a, the, the detail in there. And, and I think it's just, you know, where this game's going because, you know, there's so much space, more space available. So, you know, the run game, you know, with the jet sweeps and all the things that come off of that too, you know, it's, you know, it, it's, it, it's different because, it, you know, the stress on run defense is higher, you know, so your inside guys are, you know, are asked to do a lot more. Garrett Podell, CBS Sports, Mike, given the flow you're in as a play caller with Dak, what elements going into a new climate like you've talked about do you look at to some, a tweak to continue that flow given the different kind of climate you're going into in Buffalo? I mean, I mean, it's easy. You know, every kid that's ever grown up in Louisiana, you know, looks forward to playing up in the winter climate. So uh, it's been easy to enforce. No, I, I, th I think the biggest thing is the football. You know, I, I, I think – you know, when you when you're you know have the opportunity to to, to live and, and coach in that climate, there's there's some things that change the, your your approach more than others. You know, whether it's wind, rain, temperature, and things like that. So, temperature is, is last on the list. Um, you know, so um, I'm I'm more interested in in the wind and the rain. So, and that's I think you gotta you gotta you know maybe adjust your thinking then. Mike is an uncommon opponent uh, with um, but with this defense. Are there threads that you can pull from other opponents into this week when you think what Buffalo likes to do? From I mean, you do, but you know, it, you know, I, I think defense is, you know, I, I think the history of the coordinator is very important. Um, and, you know, in, in, in Sean, you know, his history going back to Jim Johnson in Philadelphia, you know, there's there's things that you know going back. You know, last time I competed against Sean was in 2018. So I went back, watched the Green Bay game in 18. Dak played against him here in 19 on Thanksgiving. So you, you go back and you look at those things. I know Leslie was calling the game, you know, that day, uh, Thanksgiving in 19. But, you know, you look at conceptually what they're doing, and, and there is a lot of carryover. Uh, there's a lot of carryover what Sean did to, uh, in, in Carolina, too. So, yeah, I mean, that, that's that's all you can do. And and uh, just make sure you're ready. You don't want any surprises. But, you know, there's a reason why he, you know, plays one mainly sub-personnel, because it gives him the ability to, to, to be multiple in it. You know, he's a multiple coverage. He's a multiple pressure. And um, so with that is uh, not a lot of fronts, um, not a lot of personnel. I mean, so that, I mean, it's, it's, that's really the norm of how you, you, you look at defense and j just make sure we got our guys ready. Wow. What sort of mentality does a cornerback need to have if he's going to travel with uh, offense's best receiver? And, and how have you seen Gilmore, obviously, not just this year, but over the course of his career, but how do you see him, his wiring to take on that challenge? I mean, his patience, his his his, his intellect, uh, his understanding. Um, really, I, I think it's definitely a a part of the uh, game. You have to be, um, you know, experience plays into that. It's not. You know, I wouldn't say it's definitely not for the inexperienced, uh, because there, there's things that are going to go in the course of the game that, you know, the the potential for a big play on on either side. So, and, and I think if you watch. Stephon play. I mean, he, he, he's that. That's what he is. I mean, he's has great understanding what the offense is trying to do. You know, based on you know pre-snap, you know personnel, um, and, 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 and that definitely plays into it because you know it's just like anything. I mean, if you're going to travel with someone, you know, you got to be able to go inside too and play. So I mean, it, it's and and I think that in itself is not only understanding what they're doing, but a complete understanding schematically what we're doing on defense. And, and he's that guy. Before he ever got here, but yeah. what's one thing you've learned about him that you took being around him every day to really appreciate? Oh, him? I just I just love how humble and how professional he is. You know, because I mean, you know, you know, you always respect players from the other side of the field, but you know, you really you don't know about them personally. But uh, I mean, he's been awesome. Uh, just you know, him and Brandon were two veteran guys with a lot of pelts on the wall to come in here and just engage with the locker room within their own personalities. Has been really cool, um, and I love it when he's talking to a CD Lamb, you know, and, and even the young corners. You can see right away, 
you know, I think the day he signed him and Trayvon Diggs were in the, were in the weight room next morning. So, you know, he has that credibility, but, you know, he, he gives back. He, he gives, you know, he's, he's always talking ball with the younger, younger players. And, uh, you know, he's relatively a quiet person, but um, he, he, he's engaged and connected with, with, with our locker room right away. That's been impressive. Joe White, Lone Star Live, building off the life in the A-gap kind of idea. Is there a heightened mental aspect of playing interior defensive line, knowing the spacing of today's game and also just the mobility of quarterbacks? Well, yeah, I mean, it's definitely part of it. I mean, I think if you just look at the personnel from the 90s, you know, of of the defensive front compared to today, it's it, it's different. I think the rules changes and, and all those things play into that. Yeah, no doubt. Joe. Um, I mean, a lot of guys on the practice court. Will Malik go today? Let's get it again. Hopefully. Uh, he's he's limited. He probably won't do a whole lot today. Yeah. Anger back. I know you missed yeah, he's it. back. Yes, he's, he had a great day yesterday. So. <laughs> Scott, Skyler Dixon with the AP. Oh, kind of a philosophical league-wide question. Backup quarterbacks, their value, their importance, have, has it evolved in your time in this league, or is is it more of a recency bias thing for us to ask that now with all the star quarterbacks that have gone down? I, I think it's always been very important. You know, I, I think even so more. Um, well, I mean, every generation has its stresses. You know, I, I think the, you know, he's protected more today. But, you know, we, you know, just you don't have to look any further than this year to see the injuries. You know, it's a, it's part of the game. But yeah, definitely. Um, I think when you have to change dramatically the way you play, because of one of your primary position, you have an injury to it. That's, that's a that's a big challenge. So yeah, definitely the importance. I think it's definitely as high as it's ever been. Sure. On that note, what do you think it, how much is it the quarterback versus the structure around them and the team and the, and the offensive line and the defense that allows a team to win consistently with backup quarterbacks? I think, it, I think it, it all plays in together. I don't think it's one over the other. I think it, it all has to fit together, no question. Have you, have you ever, on a road, thought the weather was going to be one thing, looking at all the forecast, then you get there and then <laughs> had to change things? Pretty dramatically, or have some sort of shift. Yeah, I'm trying know. not to be disrespectful to the weather people here, but uh, yes, it's happened. <laughs> I can remember my first playoff game, and uh, we're playing uh, Mike Holmgren and the Seattle Seahawks. Mike's coming back to Lambeau, and we're sitting there in pregame. Said, "Man, this is what a beautiful night, you know." And it was, you know, it was about 30 degrees, and wasn't a whole lot of wind, and went in and. You know, when then after the pregame came back and it started snowing, and I mean, I think I had six inches of snow. My and 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 my guy, he didn't have, he didn't have snow in the forecast. So, uh, and they and they call it the snow bowl. So uh, yeah, it, it's happened before. What sort of shift happened then from that point on, and from a coaching standpoint? What happened? Yeah. We turned the ball over. We're down fourteen nothing real quick. So that's you know we we started running it, and no, it's it, it changes. You know, I. Like I said, I, I, the elements just through experience, you know, some change more than others the way the game's going. So, uh, you know, wind and rain are, are the to me the biggest challenges. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Thank you, Mike.